Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you the Super Collider integration into Opus Modus. Now Opus Modus, if you have not heard about it before, very briefly, it's a composition language, a composition system that allows you to work on the individual elements of a musical composition or a phrase before you combine it together in a um, a full phrase basically so you can work on the length and pitches and dynamics all of that separately and then you combine it this is called parametric composition if you've never heard about this before i highly recommend to check out my video welcome to opus modus which is uh, right here on youtube um, because we're going to gloss over a lot of the opus modus stuff in this video because i want to focus on the super collider part so Super Collider, by the way, if you don't know it, it's a sound design environment. It allows you, this is what it looks like originally, it consists of a server and a language site. In the language site, you define synths and um, synth devs or effects and anything like that. You then uh, put this on the server by eval evaluating the code and then um, you can send it MIDI notes or you can uh, send it OSC or anything like that to actually play the synth. Now this is um, ported to Lisp by uh, Sungmin Park. He created this uh, CL Collider package and that is now available in Opus Modus and that is what we're going to talk about. So what you can see right here is on the left side I have everything to do with my composition, my harmony, my rhythms, my melodies. Um, we create all the different parts for all the different instruments as you can see right here and then we set up some modulation and then we assemble everything together into a full um, composition and then finally we have our def score where we assign the different parts so the notes and the lengths and the velocities to an instrument so that instrument is now a super collider synth even though opus modus is of course able to send midi it's able to send um, osc it has clm built in which is another sound design language but now we also have this super collider stuff built in so um, i'll briefly go over the the um, code on the left side here which again is the composition itself it doesn't have anything to do with the sound and then we'll focus on super collider but actually before we do that let's evaluate this so that you can um, so that you can hear what we're working with today. gives you the idea it continues a little bit further but uh, it's sort of a, a slightly experimental but still neatly 4-4 uh, composition here so um, first quickly the opus modus side so what I usually do is I start with a bunch of chords such as this one just a nice progression right there then I can create some chord inversions based on that um, I can uh, melodize those chords or I can decord them which is, is roughly the same but now we can choose the top note from the chords right so that creates our melodies so um, then for instrument one here we uh, for the first section instrument 1a we just basically have those um, chords you can look at them in the MIDI editor as well um, and then for the second section we have that as well and then for the third the C uh, the C section we um, melodize those those chords so we get this right I'm doing something similar for uh, the second instrument which also plays chords um, then we have a pluck here this is slightly different what I do here is I start with a small phrase then I repeat that based on the length of the uh, B section. 
So it just repeats the same thing um, for the total length of the section. And then uh, finally, I use the harmonic path function. If we press command D, we can see that function in the documentation and we can see that it creates a path made up of any number of harmonic items to map onto a list or lists making up a pitch sequence. So that's what we're doing right here. Um, we now map this phrase to the chords that we have so that they will always match the chords that are playing at the same time. Uh, so now it sounds like this. And then finally, I use the um, gen length density function to create a rhythm. Um, this sounds like this. So this is that parametric thing where we create a rhythm separately and then we combine it together to create a full melody. And I do the same for instrument four. Um, this is panned to the right speaker, but we'll see this later in Super Collider. Um, I have a vocal instrument. I have a flute where again, I create a rhythm first and then I map that to a melody. So we continue on, then we have our drums right here. For that, I use the polygon rhythm. If you don't know what a polygon rhythm is, I wouldn't blame you. Um, it, uh, we can visualize it as such. Um, basically, in this circle, we can think of the numbers here on the um, circumference as the actual positions in a bar. So in this case, 16 positions. Or in, in a bar, it could be half a bar. It doesn't really matter per se. Uh, and then we can fix some points where we should hear a beat where we should hear a sound so in the case of the hi-hats where we should hear a hi-hat so that's defined here so here in polygon rhythm we say all right i want out of the 24 possible positions i want to hear at least 19 um, of them so if we evaluate this so now because i choose chose 24 here we get a um, sort of a triplet kind of rhythm if i choose uh, 16 here and nine, we get a straight 16 notes. Right, so I'll revert that, uh, 24, 19. So that's for the, the drum rhythm. Then we get into some automation. Um, we can create very complex envelopes and shapes, and we can then visualize them using the list plot function or using the XY plot function if we use an envelope. Um, so, and I'm using this envelope to open the filter cutoff, which you could hear at the beginning of the piece. So then we get to assemble um, to assemble everything. So here we combine the different sections together. Um, we um, then map that to time signatures. So here you can see that the time signatures are pretty messy. Um, but if we do O and M to time signature, we can force everything to be four four time signature. Um, then here I'm using assemble subseq. This allows me to set a start and ending point. So if I listen to the composition, I'm able to say, all right, start at bar eight or start at bar 16 so that we can listen to a specific section. So that's just to make it a little bit easier to work on the score. Um, and then finally, we uh, convert all of these lists to a OM, um, to a, sorry, to a super collider format. So for example, if we take a look at the notes of instruments instrument one, um, we evaluate that, we can see that this is in opus modus format. Uh, Super Collider, however, um, wants to see MIDI notes. So that's why we convert it and we can see the actual MIDI notes rather than the opus modus notation, as we call it. And then finally, we have our score here. And this is where we define the synth that we want to use. Um, and we define the, we, we set the um, the notes, the lengths, the velocity, and all the additional parameters. And this is really where the power is at. So let's take a look at those synths, um, which are here on the on the right side. The first thing you have to do is um, boot the server, the Super Collider server. So I mentioned briefly before, Super Collider works with, with a server structure. Um, if you open your activity monitor on Mac, um, you can search for SC synth, and this is actually the, the server 
observer that the sin devs are being put on. So as soon as you evaluate um, one of these blocks of code, it puts that sin on the server, and then later we can send commands to that server. And that's what we can now do with our dev score. So if you're used to Opus Modus, you're used to using the dev score. Uh, note that this one is the dev SC score. So it's specifically made for Super Collider. Take a look at, at what happens here. So in Super Collider, when we want to create a synthesizer or an effect, um, we start with dev synth and then we give it a name. And then we set all the possible um, parameters that we might want to control. So we might want to have control over the node, the pitch and the amplitude to the level, uh, the gate to trigger an envelope. We have attack, decay, sustain, like envelope parameters. Um, then I have the mod attack here, a high pass frequency value, a low pass frequency value, the velocity, etc. So you set all of that, you set the name and you set the default value that you want to use. So that's all for this first block of a synth. Then usually, I mean, there's multiple ways to do this, but usually I go into a let scope and I assign different variables to different uh, functions or sounds. So the first one here is um, the variable freak, which is set to MIDI CPS node. And what this does, is it takes the node number in MIDI node numbers and it converts this to a frequency. So if we do, um, if we take a look at this, let's say we take MIDI note 60 and we evaluate this, we can see that it's a frequency of 261 hertz, um, which is correct. So uh, we have that on the first line here. Then I create one envelope to control the filter. This is envelope one. And I create another envelope to shape the amplitude of the sound. That's all this stuff. Um, so what we do here is we first have the um, depths of the envelope, like how how far it can open the envelope at a certain point. And then we have the times of that. So attack, decay, and release. And the same is true for the, um, the master envelope or the amplitude envelope. We have attack, decay, sustain, release. And we set a gate to trigger it. We set the level scale, which is how loud it is. And we say what happens after the envelope has ended. Um, this is in Super Collider is called a done action. And what it does is if the envelope has ended, it will release the synth from the server so that it doesn't keep playing. Um, this is essential to know about. All right, so we have that. Then we set an argument for our frequency. Um, so what we do is we take the frequency from here and we multiply that by uh, 0 0.005. That will be our detune value. And we use that to detune the left channel of the synth um, by that value. We subtract um, the detune value um, from the frequency and on the right channel we um, add that so we add some slight detuning and this will make the synth stereo as well because there's now a difference between a difference between the left and the right channels now finally we go into our actual signal so we start with this saw uh, saw wave oscillator this is actually the um, the sound part the oscillator and we specify only the frequency argument there and then we go to two filters the first one i use to control the um to control the cutoff with an envelope and the second one i use to uh, control the cutoff which is just a parameter i set myself you can do this in one line as well but i want to make it easy for you to see and then we have a high pass filter and then finally we go to the output now there one thing to note is that um, the first argument here is the speaker uh, which you want to hear you usually want to just set it to zero um, which corresponds to the left speaker but because we um, created two channels right here we will also hear the right speaker so it will be a stereo sound and then we module um, we multiply the am amplitude by the velocity by the envelope by the signal so that we have velocity control we have an um, amp value to scale the output level and the envelope of course controls uh, how quickly uh, the sound rises and stops again so we have all of that we press command e if you did everything correctly it says this at the bottom and now the synth is on the server and we can call it and um, to do that we say sc um, colon synth we specify the name and all the arguments that we want to use so we don't have to use all the arguments um, if we don't specify one the default will be taken but here we can overwrite them so let's listen to this that rises rather slowly and then it ducks again i can set the attack much faster to make it start faster 
I can set the release shorter. Frequency lower so that it's duller. Will be very soft. Let's set it to 1200. I don't know. I pass frequency to 300 to cut away some low frequencies. Oh. Let's set this back to. Uh, let's see. Let's set this to. Why not? So that we can hear the high pass frequency a little bit better. Right, so it becomes thinner. Uh, we can set all the depths, all of that. And so with this, we can create quite some variations on the sound. Let's set this to six. Um, let's set the mod attack to three. This one to 0.5. Um, mod depth four to eight. Uh, let's do something like that. Some more low frequencies. Make this one a little bit longer. All right, so now you can hear that the envelope stays down longer. Um, so with this, we have a lot of control over our sound. And this we are setting here in our uh, parameters inside the DEF SC score. And that's what really makes the music come alive. Now, another thing you can do here is map an envelope. So if I play the beginning of the piece again, you can hear that the chords are, um, they start off quite dull, but then the envelope is, um, is opening up. So you can hear that it becomes brighter based on this shape right here. Now I can make that effect more extreme by setting the top um, of the envelope to 20,000 instead of 10,000, which would pretty much be the full range. So let's take a look at, at one more example maybe. Um, so here we have some, some very simple or relatively simple uh, saw wave synths, so basically subtractive synthesis. And then here we have some FM synths, I use this to create a melody. If we jump instantly to bar 5 of the composition we should be able to hear that melody. vocals for a second by setting the um, envelope to or the level to zero and I can do the same thing for my pads and this one right here to just focus on those plucky kind of sounds. first two plugs are happening right here. Um, in FM, um, what we're doing is we use a envelope to control the frequency of a modulator which modulates the carrier. So that happens here. So we have a modulation envelope and this, this controls the carrier. And with that, we have a lot of control over the sound. We can, we can now have arguments for the ratio of the carrier, for example. We can set this to two or four. Um, we have control over the um, modulator ratio. So you can hear that you can get a lot of colors there. If we want to control the uh, release, we can set the um, release to one maybe. So the sound becomes a bit shorter. Change the index. We then actually get to 
hear the frequency modulation or hear the modulation in there. So that uh, gives us a lot of control over the sound itself. And then um, here at the end, we have probably the most complex example because it uses much more mathematics, which is a flute sound. Um, you can listen to that as well. And we can uh, change a lot of parameters here, the feedback. The uh, pressure. With too little, we don't hear anything. So now you can hear a lot of noise in the sound. Right, so there's some tweaking involved there, um, but this is basically what I um, wanted to show you for the for the um, real synthesis side, and then for the drums we are using some buffer. So a buffer is um, basically a placeholder for a sample. So what I'm doing right here is I have three different samples that I use: a kick, a snare, uh, actually four: a kick, a snare, a hi hat, and these vocals. And then um, we define a synth here. Like you can see that it starts with def synth as well. We, again, we have all our arguments here. Um, a lot of it is the same. It just depends on the super collider modules that you're using. So here we are using buffers, which work with ratios. That's why we use MIDI ratio instead of um, going to frequency. And we use playbuff.ar, which is, should be familiar to pretty much all super collider users. So in that, we load the buffer, which is our sound. Uh, and then we have the same thing where we have an envelope to control the output. Uh, so let's listen to this. So those are our vocals. I can lower the pitch. I can make the attack slower. I could even change the buffer, which would be the sample. So this, I guess, was the hi-hat sound. Let's give the attack a little bit faster. Um, so that is how you use uh, buffer synths inside um, CL Collider. Now again, I say CL Collider um, because we, under the hood, we are using this, uh, this package here to work with Super Collider. So hopefully that um, makes you enthusiastic to give this a go. It's uh, still early stages. This just came out, um, but I'm very excited about this because I've always used both software independently, and I think Opus Modus is absolutely brilliant for anything that has to do with with uh, pure composition kind of tasks. But Super Collider, on the other hand, is amazing for sound design. The amount of control that you have, uh, how incredibly far you can take it. I mean, these synths, you can make them really as complex as you want. You can keep adding to them. Um, also, there's a, a great user community in, uh, in Super Collider. There's great books and documentation about it. So you should be able to get going with that. And then once you have a little bit of experience with both these tools, the composition aspect and the Super Collider, aspect you can um, really start exploring and I'm very curious because this is new I'm very curious by about the amount of music or the amount and also the the quality of it or the the different areas that I now get to explore I'm very interested in, in seeing how I can map um, and use certain algorithms to create different parameters for the sound settings um, I think we could get some very experimental, cool, new types of sounds out of this um, combination. So I hope you are just as enthusiastic as I am about that. If you like the video, uh, please follow our channel. I will try to um, upload more consistently than I have done in the past. And uh, with that being said, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.